Today I'm discussing Addison's disease, which is more formally known as hypoadrenocorticism. Um, it's a deficiency in corticosteroid hormones. So a little bit of background. The adrenal glands, which are cranial of the kidneys, produce corticosteroid hormones. Um, these hormones are the glucocorticoids, which affect the metabolism of fat, sugars, and proteins. And specifically in a fight or flight response, they're gonna be ready to burn calories instead of uh, store calories as fat. Um, and the mineral, mineralocorticosteroids affect the sodium potassium balance. And so in a fight or flight response, the body is going to conserve sodium in case of a massive blood loss, um, and that, therefore the potassium is going to be excreted. Um, so why does this matter? Um, these hormones are essential for an animal to be able to adapt to a stressful situation, and without them, their, their body basically could go into all kinds of physiological um, detriment. So some causes of Addison's disease um, is immune destruction of the adrenal tissue, a trauma or infection that reached the adrenal gland, or the uh, adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex, right. And then adrenal the, cortex. so the other degrees is hyperadrenal corticism. And so if you're treating that and you go overboard with the treatment, then you cause the hypoadrenal corticism. Um, and then it could, there's a secondary form that results from a tumor or a pituitary gland injury. Yeah, and when you got the tumor or the pituitary gland injury, then it's not, re the pituitary, anterior pituitary, is not releasing ACTH, which goes in the blood to stimulate the adrenal cortex. So yes, right. it can be both one or the other causes. Exactly. So for the clinical presentation, um, typically first you'll see the physical presentation, which is <coughs> lethargy, vomiting, increased thirst, urination, or diarrhea. And typically this will be a wax and wane, and you might not notice it in your pet, but it might be with stress, um, st stressful situations. And typically by the time you're seeing these physical presentation, 90% of the adrenal gland function may be gone. So then that might go on for a while and eventually you're going to come to a time that's called the Addisonian crisis, which is a really severe episode of vomiting, diarrhea, shaking, or collapse. And once this time comes, you have to get to an emergency vet or else there is a possibility that they could die because while they're going through this crisis, their potassium level in their heart is rising, which disrupts the rhythm and there's the possibility that the heart will just stop completely. I'll add something to that. Sometimes when they euthanize large animals, it doesn't happen in small animal practice because you could you, you buy the bottle of the euthanasia stuff. But when you have like a 1,600 pound cow, you can imagine how much drug you have to have. So they give them an overdose of potassium chloride IV mm -hmm. and it stops the heart. It looks like there's been high potassium. That's so it's dangerous. It can very, kill, very kill the dog. And I found this video online. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna see, yes, the shaking. She's not very responsive. She's just kind of blinking. At this point, probably her heart is slowing and has arrhythmia. Um, mm -hmm. So at this point, it's very essential that. And so this, like, this is an acute thing that happens. But the lead up to this was destroying the adrenal gland, the mm -hmm. adrenal cortex, and you said, Sometimes you don't get those clinical symptoms until you get 90% destruction. Right. So it's been, you know, under the surface of the water, but, you know, it's finally this. Right. And it's been slowly coming, and normally it's frequent visits, and then sometimes because of the shaking and the um, unresponsiveness, it might be misdiagnosed as a seizure disorder yeah. also. Um, so it's known to be very hard to diagnose at first. It's gotten many misdiagnoses before you get the right one with Addison's. So then you have to do testing to be sure of what you're really looking at. So there's a blood chemistry test, 
that's typically done. And then if you're going on, you can do an electrocardiogram, ultrasound, and finally the ACTH stimulation test, which will be the final test you do to test. So on the blood chemistry test, you're going to see increased levels of creatine and blood urea nitrogen, which often leads to the misdiagnosis as kidney disease or failure, but then the patient responds well to fluids, and so obviously that's not the correct diagnosis. Um, and then some vets will go on and do an ECG, electrocardiogram, which rules out heart disease, which might have been a possibility since you had um, the irregular heartbeat from the potassium buildup. And then sometimes an ultrasound will be done on the abdomen of the kidneys to make sure there's not infection or um, tumors, abscesses, anything like that. Um, and then finally, so the ACTH stimulation test I think is really awesome. So you test the gluco glucocorticoid hormone, no, glucocorticoids before you do this injection and then afterwards. And so the ACTH is released from the pituitary gland and it's supposed to act on the adrenal glands. And so if the adrenal glands do not react to the ACTH, you know the problem is in the adrenal glands. But if they do react, then you know it's in the pituitary. <coughs> So it's a very great diagnostic yeah, I think it's, they call it the definitive Exactly. Um, so that is going to be your defining test that will tell you for certain. And then after that, you move on to the treatment and prognosis. So there's a injection called Percortin, and it's an injectable mineral low corticoid, and it replaces... Um, those lost mineral corticoids, and you do that about every three to four weeks um, based on body weight typically. And then, in the conjunction with that, you would need to use a replacement glucocorticoid supplement, which is typically at the clinic I worked at, prednisone. Mm. So, good old prednisone. Yeah. And then we did that typically with smaller dogs, but with larger dogs, we did the Florina, which is glucocorticoid, which is a mineralocorticoid and a glucocorticoid replacement, and that's a twice a day oral. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so, as long as you can afford the treatment, um, it's a long, happy life on the patient. Once you get those balance. Because in general, if you have a disease that does isn't making enough of something, a lot of times you can supplement. The exactly. problem becomes if something's too high. It's harder to bring something down than to bring mm -hmm. something up in general. Mm -hmm. Ready for questions? Absolutely. Questions, comments? Some of you that have seen dogs like this or experienced this in a dog. It happens in a lot of animals, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I've ever seen the list, but I'm gonna probably say uh, in most of the domestic animals it can happen, right? We either get overproduction or underproduction. This what is go ahead. More typical in dogs and Female dogs are twice as likely to get it than males, um, typically around three to four years old, but any age can show um, clinical signs. Um, and there's actually a couple of breeds that are supposed to be predisposed, mm -hmm. predisposed like standard poodles. Right. So I think there's some genetic component. I'm not sure how much. But so here's why you'd hardly ever find it in cattle, sheep, and pigs. They'll die. And then you end the propagation of those an animal's not doing well, you call it. But in pets, we fix things, and then they might breed and propagate the genes, so it's very common, very interesting. So yeah, so the other one, you know, this is a um, low amount of the glucocorticoids, and the high amount is the Cushing's disease, right. it's called, okay? And it's very interesting, if you're a horse person, Cushing's in horses is a little different than Cushing in dogs, other comments, questions? Let's give her a round of applause for Caroline. And that's today's presentation. I have enough, oh, we didn't, oh crap, we forgot to. I'll just assume everybody's here, because you girls didn't do your job. Okay, so then, you know, next week, let me just tell you who's on. 
Lauren, Nicole, Gabriella for Monday. And somebody's bringing a dog. Lauren? Okay. What's that? Uh, Wednesday. I have you down for Monday, Lauren. Okay, yeah. Um, maybe you want to come. What's your name again? Allie, let's see. Allie. Oh, oh, there it is. Sorry. I'm looking at a card. Yeah. Allie, is, you're bringing the dog Wednesday, but how about Lauren? Are you here, Lauren? Lauren uh, stuck me? Okay. But I have Wednesday, the 26th of September. If you want to sign up, come up when you're leaving. I've got, you know, we've got all next week full, but then Wednesday, the 26th, if you want to put something on there, that's up here. Okay? Otherwise, see you... Oh, yeah, and I'll email you about like a Friday assignment. I'm going to have like maybe one article. Yeah, I'm going to do that.